Welcome back to Making Money Matter. I'm your host, Kerry Stevens, and I've asked Andrew Corbett. He's the CEO of Kingston Resources out there in New South Wales. The ASX code is KSN. Well, you can see it behind you. There are there you uh, Now, Andrew, welcome to Making Money Matter. First time on the program. This is one of my favourite areas, ladies and gentlemen. It's Cobra, it's New South Wales, and it's gold and copper. It's a polymetallic uh, deposit. I want Andrew to give us a bit of background but also what they're doing out there, what Andrew has done mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. the Mineral Hill project that they only picked up a couple of years ago is pretty stunning. And I don't think any of you out there actually understand what he's doing. So that's why he's on. Andrew, welcome. Thanks, thanks, Kerry. And thank you for having us back or having us off for the first time on Making Money. It's it's great to be here and, and talking to new, new potential investors and hopefully current shareholders. And I just want to correct you on one thing. It's not me doing it. It's the team. Oh, fair it, enough. Fair we enough. Have a we have a cracking team at Kingston, and 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 what we're delivering is is fantastic. So, we you know, we've been building Kingston since 2016. So we were three people in 2016. We're now a hundred odd people. Most of them are in New South Wales, and a few people up in PNG with our our big gold project there at Missima. So, it's been a very interesting eight years. You know, has it taken too long? Yes. Would I've liked to have been producing a lot more gold and a lot more cash flow by now? Yes, we would have. But we're there now. And that's and that's the important takeaway message for, you know, people that are listening today. In that, two two and a half years ago, January twenty two, we became the owner of Mineral Hill. Mm -hmm. We uh, the we bought it off a group who took it out of administration. They are now one of our biggest shareholders, and they remain exposed to the project and very supportive. It's been a tailings project. It has not that everyone's flavour of the month tailings projects, but this is a tailings project that's actually made money. We've generated 25 million of operating cash flow from the tailings project. Wow. We put yeah, and we only paid 23 million for the whole project. So the tailings project is already delivered. The tailings will finish in the next two months. By the hope by the end of May will be finished and starting hard rock mining. So but again, coming back to we're only three people now we're hundred, we needed to learn to be a miner because it's not easy to be an explorer, a developer, then becoming a miner. And we see a lot of companies stumble and fail. So that's been the one of the most important benefits of the tailings project. We've got to cut our teeth. We got to learn. We got to develop the in-house skills and the experience that we need to take the company to the next phase. Okay. We're very proud of self-manage and self-perform. We talk about this all the time in Kingston. Uh, and this has been driven down from our chairman down, Mick Wilkes, who we're not, we don't dislike contractors, but we want the margins to stay in Kingston and for Kingston shareholders. So we are owner mining the tailings project. We're going to own a mine the open pits and we're going to put our own team underground. Um, we currently rent the fleet, but when we go underground, we'll, we're going to purchase our own fleets. So our strategy is a little bit different. We do everything we can ourselves. Um, and that's why it's it's working. That's why we're building the skills and developing the team to become a successful gold and copper producer in the very near term. Uh, you just said something there, gold mm. and copper producer. Mm. What's what's the balance there between the gold and the copper? Mm. Our current resource base is actually 40% copper and 30% gold. Now, that swings around a little bit depending on what your gold price and copper price assumptions are, and over the last few weeks it's been moving around. But today we are a gold producer and for the next 18 months we will be a gold producer and then the copper starts. So uh, let, me, let me go into that. So tailings project, let's say that's finished. It's been gold and a little bit of silver. We go into our open pits, which run for at least 12 months. We're updating that mine plan now. Um, so we'll think we'll get a bit longer out of them. And that is gold and silver. Three and a half gram gold and nearly 60 grams silver, the open pits are. So high margin open pits. Um, you know, we should do last last financial year, we, we did 45 million in sales, about 16 million in EBITDA. We will do more than double all that next year. Um, so for a little just, 40 million. So, so, sorry to interrupt you. You just <laughs> said we're going to more than double that next year. So when you say <laughs> stuff like that, I'm like, well, where's that coming from and what does that look like? So we're going to be at about thirty to thirty-five thousand ounce run rate next year, versus the year before we were sixteen thousand. So simple maths. That's the double, more than doubling the revenue line. But our margins actually will expand because the higher grade 
of the open pits and the silver credit. So there's a scenario where we will generate significant free cash flow in next year, and that is really important for setting the business up, having a strong balance sheet, having a platform to grow in Cobar. So we literally look at these two little pits as our turning point for the business um, and giving, you know, we've got, we've got a fully operating, fully approved plant, workforce and a balance sheet to grow in New South Wales. So that's why it's a very interesting time for us. You know, everyone keeps saying, well, what's the, why, why do I want to own Kingston? Well, we're probably going to generate our market cap and some in next year. So that's a pretty strong attraction. Okay. Um, we own a miner with a fully approved project. That's pretty strong attraction. And we haven't even scratched the surface on the mine life and the expiration yet. Yeah, I'll talk about the expiration in a minute, but you just mentioned the plant. Do mm -hmm. you have to do any refurbishment of that plant? Yeah, so we've been we are more than eighty percent through that. We're spending twelve point six million dollars. And it's a fantastic effort. Again, hundred percent project managing this ourselves. We have contractors for work packages, but all of our team are overseeing and and doing the as much work as we can. Um, and that will give us a 7,000 tonnes per annum copper equivalent operating plant. So in terms of capital intensity, everyone talks about what's the cost to build a copper mine or a gold mine nowadays. We're going to be one of the lowest cost delivered capital projects, uh, copper capital projects on the ASX. So that's a big tick. So in terms of future earnings, we don't have a big DNA. We don't have a big uh, uh, a lot of money to depreciate here because we haven't actually spent much. So... That gets us a plant that's doing 350 to 400,000 tonnes per annum, but we're fully approved for a plant to do 700,000 tonnes per annum. So okay. we've got our own potential to expand the plant, which that's that we talk about that st as stage three. So stage one was the tailings we're finishing. Stage two is what we're coming into right now, doubling our yeah. production, getting getting the hard rock going, and then stage three is, right, how do we double again? And that and that's what that's sort of next year's, story we're going to get onto that so that's what we're working on um right now open pit mining for 12 months or a bit more then we've got four years in the underground the underground's really important because we have two undergrounds so two declines two portals we've already rehabilitated one and pumped it out and fully bolted and meshed it we're ready to go we're going to put wow. a drill rig in. yeah so we're going to put a drill rig in that second half of this year What's two declines and two portals worth nowadays? I, I mean, I, I don't want to put a number on it. What's the plant worth today? It's a lot more than what we paid $23 million, a lot more than the refurbishment costs, and we've already got revenue from the project. So it's a, it's a really interesting time. Um, we are just coming up for air. We're now just starting to get out there and talk to people again and investors again and, and, and get them to understand the value in Kingston. Um and being, you know, we want to, I want to talk about the Cobar base and strategically how we think we fit into that story as well. So, yeah, because that's a really busy space, Cobar, at the moment, isn't there? And I'm looking at other areas, and there's a lot of MA activity going on. And I'm looking at you in Cobar. Yeah. Talk to us about what's happening out there because it is a busy space. It is, it is. And, you know, there's effectively um, seven, eight plants in Cobar. Wow. Only, only, only four of them are operating. There's three on care and maintenance, and then there's sort of another one which is sort of halfway between. So that's really important. Mineral Hill will be one of only four operating plants in the Cobar Basin. We're the only operating plant in the southern Cobar Basin. We are one of only two polymetallic plants with the CIL. So what does that mean? We can produce copper, we can produce lead, we can produce zinc, and we've got a CIL to produce Dore. So... We're a bit of a jack of all trades. We can take any ore in the Cobar Basin, um, and Mineral Hill is like that. It's it's a polymetallic project. It has yeah. copper ores, it has lead zinc ores, it has gold only ores. So the plant's fit for purpose for Mineral Hill, but it's fit for purpose for the whole Cobar Basin. So we're open for business. <laughs> we commission this plant. We literally yeah. commission this plant in the next two months. We've got it full with our feed but we want to double the production and feed for the plant. So stranded assets, absolutely. Uh, anything in trucking distances needs to be looked at for Mineral Hill. 
Um, and then you go, well, you know, does that lead to bigger and better things with corporate strategies? Well, I think it will. Everyone talks about Cobalt consolidation. Nobody's doing anything. So No, they're not at the moment. And that's then very, all for very valid reasons, right? We're all looking after our own business, getting our own balance sheet, you know, getting the cash flow. So they're all very valid, important reasons why not much is happening. But, you know, at some point that will change. Uh, Andrew, I t- I'm talking to you in April of 2024. You have got a uh, a shareholder retail um, entitlement shareholder placement going on at the moment. I think it's 13.5 mm-hmm. for the whole the whole yes. shareholding, and then the retail component is a, a part of that. I believe it closes. I think on the 8th of May. I'm talking to you before that. So, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's six and a half cents yep. trading at about seven seven and a half at the moment. Talk yep. to us about that. Talk to us about the timing yes, and the amount you're raising and what it's going to be for. Yep, so it's two steps. So placement is complete. So that was... Placement is complete, okay. Yep, placement is complete. So that was eight point, let's say eight and a half, eight and a bit. Um, that was done at six and a half cents. Very strong support from existing shareholders and a couple of really new uh, institutional shareholders came in, which is really very encouraging for where we are in the strategy. And then we did quite a lot large rights issue and we did this on purpose to let shareholders mm. actually take up their entitlement and they can go for shortfall as well so we look it's a big raise for us 13 and a half million mm. on a 40 million market cap yeah a few people have said why have you gone so hard well because this sorts it out this rips the band-aid off you know this puts us in a position where we're very well funded to get that cash flow and build that balance sheet that we want to have to grow. Um, so it's we've felt the whole time we've had Mineral Hill, we've just been slightly capital constrained all the time. Yeah. So this sorts it out. Um, this puts us in a position, particularly once these pits generate start to generate cash flow, to do more drilling, to do the organic growth that we want to do, to start to look at studies. Like I talked earlier about, how do we double to how do we get the whole plant to 700,000 tons per annum? Maybe we can do it on our own. Maybe we've got our own tons. We just yeah. need to drill. Yeah. So there's there'll be that dual track around organic growth. There'll be tons that we already own. And then obviously stand, stranded resources or tons that make sense. Um, can, I, can I just take you back a step as well? Uh, you said 13.5 mil. I, I, by the way, I agree with you. Rip the band aid off. You, know, yeah. got cash flow. you don't need to necessarily go back to market. I'm not saying. I definitely won't, but I'm just saying yeah, it's right. things are going in the right uh, direction. Talk to us about the use of these funds. Yep, so it's very simple. Finishing the plant upgrade was about $5 million, five million for waste stripping in the plants and then some money for drilling and a bit of expiration. Yeah, that's it. Basically, very, very simple use of funds. It is all going back into Mineral Hill, um, which is really important for the business and, and for the growth strategy. So... Six and a half cent raise. We're trading 7.1. We haven't traded below 6.9 since we've done it. So the market is quite happy with the transaction. Okay. It's not often, you know, I can't remember in the last few years, that you see equity raises done that actually trade above the equity raise. <laughs> it's very true, actually, Andrew. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. It's But, you know, gold's helped, plus the story helps. And the other thing that... Um, People are getting confidence in our deli- ability to deliver, and we have done a lot of work in making in in not over promising and actually talking to people about what we can do and what we can deliver, um, and we've been doing that. So I think that's starting to build support. Um, I, I I would agree with you, but what are the cha- what what do you think is the biggest challenge, if any, at Mineral Hill right now? Oh, look, I think getting. The right people are is still a challenge. It has improved. Um, you know, we're running ads right now for open pit truck drivers and and, and excavator operators and things like that. And there's people applying. Um, we're residential, and that's one of the big advantages of Mineral Hill is that, and why we can t- contain our costs is that we're avoiding FIFO. FIFO costs are adding material overheads to the whole mining industry. So if you can do residential and keep get people home every night and offer an attractive seven and seven roster, which is what we're doing, it's it's making a big difference for us. So there is obviously always people retention and growing your talent and your people. Uh, they, that's one thing. Inflation's still, it's mm. still 
there. It's still there, but it's settling down. You know, we're not seeing the big increases coming through on the rise and falls for reagents and things like that. They've started to settle down. Um, you can get pumps now. You can get access to, uh, you know, utes, light vehicles. Um, so there's, there, it's starting to settle down. And look, you know, I don't want to talk ill of other sectors, but some commodities, other commodities have had a tough few months, you know, nickel and lithium and things like that. Very so much. those that's just pulled the taking the edge off the demand, taking the edge off the everybody heading to the Western Australia to go and work in those mines. So it, it does feel like it's settling down. Um and then I guess there's just delivery timelines. You just got to make sure we commission on time. Get the plant on, yeah, you know, operating on time. Get the open pit producing on time. Just remind me, uh, or us, when is the uh, plant going to be fully operational? Uh, June. June. Okay. Yeah. Under underground mining. How difficult uh, is, is that going to be? You know, because as I say, you, you're starting on your hard rock mining in the open mm. pit. Then mm. you go underground. You've got two declines, uh, and one of them you're you're well underway. Mm. Mm. They, is that difficult going underground? I mean. We're, uh, it's funny, we're more underground miners than open pit miners. I'm personally an underground mining engineer. Our, most of our boards are more comfortable with underground. Um, we went and bought a second-hand jumbo on Bogger already. We've already hired a couple of ship bosses that already work for us. We're sort of just slowly ramping ourselves up and into it. Um, look, there will be key positions like jumbo operators and a few skilled people we're going to go after and hire as early as we can. But Mineral Hill is just like the rest of Cobart. It's very competent ground. It's hard rock. It's good ground conditions, standard long hole open stoping. In fact, we don't even need to backfill, but you know, we might backfill if we if to help with the mine plan. But yeah. ground conditions are good. It's it's very vanilla underground hard rock mining in Cobart. So no mineral hill underground, really looking forward to it, to be honest. <clears throat> um that, that's my my background. That's what I want to that's I'd like to have two or three that's of them. Right. Okay, that's where he's going. Talk to me because uh, I, I don't want to miss out on Missima either, which is in PNG. But just talk to us about exploration upside potential. So, all the drilling we've done today is just been about building the mine plan. Yeah, and that will be the same for the next twelve months. You know, one of the things that we do uh, as a board and management team is very focused on cash flow. We will drill when we've got cash flow. We don't drill just for the sake of drilling, right? So the open pits will become cash flow positive very quickly. Then we'll start the underground drill. It will be just building that underground mine life. So that sort of takes us up to this Christmas. So there'll be lots of news flow around resource extension and resource drilling and infill and expand and, and, and adding to the mine life. Then the next year, so calendar year 25, we really want to start the explorations. We, Mineral Hill has not been explored for 30 years. The oh, only is that work, right? Bloody hell. Oh, the, the only work that's been done at Mineral Hill is is resource drill. So we've already got six ore bodies that have been mined at Mineral Hill. Only two of them we think are closed off, so there's four to go back and try and extend. Yep. We think there's going to be material amount of new ones around that because <clears throat> there's just too much smoke to say that these six are in. You know, like all things... You know, in the shadow of the head frame or under the tailings dam is usually the next mine, right? So, so, <laughs> so, so true. We've, we've just got to keep drilling around the project and keep keep progressing it. Um, so we're very confident we'll add to our own tonnes. We've already got 9 million tonnes. So we're talking about a three fifty to 400,000 tonne plant. We don't actually need a lot of tonnes to keep extending the mine life. Mm -hmm. But if we double the plant and get it all to 700,000 tonnes, then obviously we need more. We need more inventory. Yeah. We need tonnes. Yeah. Um, our neighbours are drilling around us. They look like they've got a discovery about 11 k south of our plant. Who's that? So, Talisman. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so I, I'm. we watch their drilling results as closely as we watch our own almost. So <laughs> that's really good. Um, they've got assays pending right now on a hole which looks very, very much like Mineral Hill. You know, if you were going to put their core next to our core, you'd be struggling to tell the difference from what wow. we can see. So that's really positive. And they're also drilling to the north of us as well on another prospect. So the south of us is called Durnings and to the north is called Rip and Tear. So, you know, our neighbours are having success. Um, 
there's a lot of activity around Cobar. There's a lot of activity around Cobar South because it's underexplored. Hmm. So, yeah. so that's that's where you'll be heading now. Uh, sorry, there's so much to get through today. You'll have to. No, come that's back. okay. Uh, one last thing to to ask you, Misima. Misima is yes. in PNG. It I, I would expect because I'm seeing a lot of M and A activity that given the increase in the gold price, increase in, I mean, now you're on mainstream media with uh, the gold, everyone talking gold. What's going on with Missima? We've owned Missima since 2017. We were 49% of it. We're now 100%. We completed the PFS. We've completed the feasibility, the DFS in 2022. Um, and we've 90% of the way there on the approvals. We've slowed down because once we've completed the DFS, it was clearly obvious it's a very big project. We need a joint venture partner. We're not big enough to build it on our own. So we've announced that. Uh, we have a data room. There are people talking to us. The It went very quiet last year on all gold m and I think. I that, that has changed. Yeah. The gold, you don't need me to tell you that. You can see it by the transactions. You can see it by the interest in the gold space. The gold price is helping. There are more people wanting to talk to us about MISMA now than there has been for a long time. You know, what is that going to lead to? I can't tell you yet. The ideal structure would be a joint venture where uh, we have a big brother who helps us progress the project to production and we are a minority position. So that's what we're trying to achieve. Um, it's a 20-year mine life. It already has 15 years of reserves. You know, it's 120, 150,000 ounces per annum. If wow. we could be, yeah, if we could be part of that and just re retain a, a small position, we'd be very happy with that. So that's what we're working on. Um, let's watch this space. I, I'd like to say something's going to happen this year. Fingers crossed. You know, let's 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 see where we go. Goodness me, it, is, it, it, it is it having Missima progressing. And a growth strategy in New South Wales is a pretty exciting story. Do you think that that's uh, like given given you're doing this capital raise at the moment at six and a half cents? Do you think that's why your share price is just sitting there at seven? But I'm just looking at all the things that you're doing in the cash flow, mm -hmm. and this is potentially the last cap raise that you're going to do because you're going to be getting some a lot of cash flow from from the gold and then eventually the copper as well. That's right. Look, I think so. I think people are well. It comes back to doing the people trusting what we're doing, right, as well. So, you know, we bought a little tailings project that everyone thought was going to lose money and we've made $25 million so far. So people are starting to back us, listen to what we say. You know, I, a lot of the times when I say, I think I'm going to get a deal on this, and people just roll their eyes. Well, maybe <laughs> now they're starting to rethink that maybe these guys might get something done on this. Yeah. So I think it does help. I think it is helping. And look, the cash flow, like we're not, we're too small to provide guidance. We're not going to. But people can do the numbers pretty quickly of what we could generate next financial year. Uh, well, it's a it's a great story. Let's wrap it all up. Give us three reasons why you think people should sit up and take notice of you right now. Doubling production and cash flow. Mm -hmm. nice. Copper copper growth is coming or strategically in the Cobar Basin. And we've got a lot of gold leverage. A lot of gold leverage with Missima. I, I love the story. I love both stories. And I do think that there's some exciting times ahead for Kingston Resources. Thank you so much for joining me today on Making Money Matter. Thanks, Kerry. It was good to talk.